Hello again everybody. I hope you're all having a lovely bank holiday. Um, yeah, I'm up on the hill, at, up at um, Sutton, and um, I'm on the old Burtoot, as you can see, spraying our winter wheat. Uh, yeah, yeah this, is his, this is his main dose this time, um, it's T1s. And then we put another one on, which is Manzi, which is for um, something to do with plant health. There's a few bits going on, to be honest with you. So I'm not not 100 percent sure what they are, but I know they're uh, fungicides, plant health, and uh, we yeah um, growth regs and stuff, but. Yeah, I haven't. I don't think I've ever done anything with a bird tube before the spraying, but we're uh, we were a little bit behind. But I think after today we'll be all caught up now. It's looking fair enough, you know, a fair crop. This was pretty wet when we put this in, but we are on a bit of a hill as well. I don't always like hills that much. But it always gets the job done. Want a few more revs, that's what we want. So. It's quite good to burr too because it uh, sorts itself out, it's um, automatic. So. I usually put 140 litres of water to the hectare, but I am actually only putting 120 today. Um, we had a really nice damp night, so I thought, well, if I do 120, um, should be okay. Uh, fingers crossed. But, um, but no, uh, I think I've done just over 60 hectares so far. So uh, we've got a good old chunk done. Uh, I think I've got about another 40 to do, so. Won't be too late a day. Right, I don't know what you can see and you can't see on the screen, but in my right hand is uh, the control stick. And on that you've got booms here, then you can shut off parts of the booms there and uh, turn turn it, turn it on and off as you're tur turning on the headlands, these two. That one there I'm about to push is on, stick forward. This is hydraulic drive, it's got four hydraulic motors on the uh, wheels and it drives with a big hydraulic pump up front. Uh, it's hydraulic drive. These two here, uh, set your boom that way. So if you're getting a little bit of a rut, you can uh, manually override it. That lifts your booms up and down, them two. And this is your control box, your computer, which basically you set in what you want and it actually more or less does it itself for you. So And... Uh, We've had a bit of an overhaul with her, to be honest with you, because we've had a few issues, so she is tip-top at the minute. This little box up here, that's the four-wheel steer. You've got two-wheel steer, four-wheel steer, and your crab steer on there. I don't know why you've got crab steer on a bloody sprayer, but I'm sure there's a reason for it. Uh, no, I just ease back a bit, shut her off and turn uh, 
that little thing you can hear going Shh. this has uh, got air systems on it um, the booms are pumped all the time it, the flow of the water is going around the booms all the time and it returns to the tank till you push the on off button and each and every nozzle has got a little air switch on it which turns each and every nozzle off uh, sort of independently but you can turn them on and it's instant instant spray where be on the and the older sprayers you used to have to wait for the pressure to build up well this is instant it pressured all the time so you click that um oh, a bit of a wet hole there I've got me narrow wheels in on so she does tend to buoy in a bit if it's a bit wet It is an absolutely gorgeous day, especially for spraying. It's not a breath of wind. Uh, I must admit it was really wet this morning when I first got up. I got up about five o'clock, so I could get myself a good early start. But everything loaded up when we well, put the sprays in the trailer there's so much of it I put a trailer on the back of me uh, Ranger and uh, brought it up on the trailer uh, I have noticed my spinner isn't um, chucking full width it's a, it's a little bit light between the spinner swaths uh, Another little thing to consider. I have thought about doing liquid nitrogen, then I could use this to put it on. So, well that would work double the workload of this old sprayer. That's so, uh, And self propelled, self propelled sprayers don't come cheap. This one weren't too bad. She's 24 meters, so it's a good size. Um, everything works on this apart from one thing, the air conditioning. <laughs> so the old legend's losing a bit of weight today again. I've got a bit of a sweat on. Um, went to Frapston Market yesterday. First time I've been to Frapston Market. Lovely old market it is. And uh, sold some big stores we had. So, yeah, I want to make hay of their grass. So I thought, well, the trade is really, really good for stores. Really good trade. So. If you've got any 14 to 18 month and old animals, they're close, close to a thousand pound. If it's an exceptional one, over a thousand pound. Uh, uh, the old wheat's looking quite well, to be honest with you. pleased with it this year the way it looks but then I was really pleased with the way it looked last year it's not yours until it's in that shed that's what my old dad used to say don't you go considering that yours boy till that's in that bloody barn I'd forgotten about that old saying I had till last year I bloody remembered it quickly though The old fellas had a bloody saying for everything, didn't they? Yeah. Mind you, it could be a bit messed up because they reckon if you grow cuckoo barley, that'll be useless. Don't bother putting it in because it'll be a waste of time. I heard a cuckoo two weeks ago, three weeks ago. 
I think he got up early, I did. So, I know it's only a saying and uh, shouldn't put too much stead in it, but he was cuckooing a lot a uh, couple of weeks ago, so. I've got ours all in now. The peas over the other side, they're all up, so. Well, they're not all up, but they're, they're coming up. I put them in quite deep because I wanted to put them down in the moisture. They didn't dry out too quick, you get them too close to the top. I'll tell you what, I think I'm bloody drying out in here. Well, it's running down with bloody... Oh dear. Reminds me when I used to have a motorbike. Go out on a wet day and it used to run around the crack of your bum. I'm going to have to have a drink in a minute, I think I'm melting. Uh, yep, we've got one week as from tomorrow to uh, get the, the bulker finished off. And uh, GM55, my other Arctic, <coughs> get that fit for a uh, MOT. That goes a week today, a week tomorrow, so one of the reasons I'm getting this spraying done today, well one of them, one of them is it's a lovely spraying day because there's no wind and uh, another one is I want to be able to Monday, Tuesday crack on with that chassis. To be honest we nearly done it, <coughs> the chassis, we've got all the lights on now. We're just wiring them up now. Well, we wired them back to the junction boxes. We've got to go in the junction boxes now and wire, wire the right ones to the right ones, if you know what I mean. The rest of the team have got the day off. They've all gone to the Sodding Truck Festival. Hey, where's the old man again, the boss? Sweating his nuts off in this sprayer. Yeah, they've all gone up to the truck festival. We've got a few friends with lorries that have gone up, like, you know. And, uh, they have barbecues and things like that in the evening, so it you ain't know, just about going around the festival. They get to rub shoulders and, you know, just catch up with a few friends, but I shan't be doing it this year. Oh, I know it's on tomorrow as well, Bank Holiday Monday, but oh, I got up yesterday morning at half past four to get these cattle loaded and uh, sorted and loaded and um, off to Frapston. I was up this morning early to do this. I'll be glad of a day off. Uh, I've got a few more hours work here yet. Yeah. Only good thing is though, like my Belzer is one of my old tankers, my water Belzer. That's sitting back at the loading point with 16,000 litres in it. I never run out of water. <laughs> Before you say anything about those misbits with a drill, <coughs> I didn't drill this field. Uh. Bug of my soup's running. I tell you what, this ain't far off Flagley. I'll be lucky I am catching up. Turn you around so you can have a look at the booze.
Oh, I should have shut that off. Mm. That's the right hand boot. Obviously. But watch out for the hedge. It's a bit triangular up this end. strike in this field. I've got one the other side of the hedge to do as well. But no, it's been a eventful week or two. You're sort of doing that, doing the chassis and one thing and another. Got to fold up now. And get a bloody drink. To do that, lock the booms down, lock the pendulum out, and then you can start folding up. I like to lift up there to four, four the other side. Now I've got to swing in the outer booms. This is for people who don't do spraying and have never had anything to do with spraying. I'm sure there's lots of you who have. There's also lots of you that haven't. They just fold up behind me. Now just fold them ones in. And you let them down onto the carriers. There you go, we're all folded up. So I whiz down this headland to the next field. Turn the pump off. I think I just sprayed myself. Ah, I'm glad I ain't a weed. No, it's been hard work just lately. But good, we've got a lot of progress made. And uh, yeah, trailer's looking great. Um, you know, we sent GM55 off, she's been had a tachograph six week, weekly checked, put it back on the uh, on the uh, O license and that, and that's uh, all in, back on the insurance. It's nice because we're getting ready, getting ready to uh, <coughs> cart drawing. We just need a couple of lorry drivers now, so. There's a couple of chaps out there with a Class 1 HGV who want to drive a straw lorry or a bulker. Give us a ring. Oh, my old boys turned that up. Phew. I let go for a minute. Bit noisy with the door open. 
I remembered to bring my microphone this time. Fair. A few of you moaned last time because I forgot to take it with me on the drill. If you knew what my poor old head was like and what was whizzing round in there. <coughs> I'm doing two men's job as well, so. The one we just came out of is what we call top left field, and this is the one we call shed field. <coughs> Heavy as hell along this top headland it is. What have I got left? I've got 800 litres left, so. I'll get half of this field done, or good part of it. Drinky time. I've got a soup flask. There it is. I get some black currant and some water and uh, some ice out of the fridge and uh, slap it in there. That's been in there since yesterday. And the bloody ice hasn't melted yet. It's brilliant. Ever since, nice and refreshing it is. Ice cold drink with a little bit of black currant in it. Spot on, there's another little tip for you. You don't just have to put hot drink in the, the flask. That is nice though. That is nice. Right, up we go again. Lift the booms up. Swing the main ones out. Set me levels. Swing out the short ones. Bit aggressive, so you have to be a bit careful with these. You soon break them. I want about letting my old boy have a go with this. I'll have to. There's little valves you can turn to slow them down. I'll have to slow them down a bit before I give it to him. One of them will be end up laying on the floor. It will. He's an aggressive young man. He is. Right, put it down to near the ground a bit. Don't want it that way. End up in the next doors. All uh, right. Right, I'm gonna switch off a bit. I'll put you on again a bit later. There we go. We're done. It's a bloody bit warm in here. Ugh. Home the door now. Yeah, we've got um, we've got air conditioning. Hang up, we just fell off. Four wheel steering box for the um, actual grill. This is your me. The up here you got um, zero liters a hectare. That tells you what litres you're putting on, that's what speed. This is a bar, and uh, I think that's your hours. No, that's how many litres I've put on. That's it, I don't actually set that one. That's your programming panel. Um, these down here, these are your folding up switches. This is on off, and that's your manual pressure for up and down. And these just uh, light up pretty when you turn all your lights on. Um, this little gizmo here, which is a cracking little gizmo, it basically tells you how many litres you've got left in the tank. It's actually telling me we're 884 litres, but it also is programmable. You can program that in there, and there's a couple of switches on the side. Um, if you set like 2,500 litres into that box, 
it'll blast a, an alarm when it's full and shut itself off so you can go in and make a cup of coffee whilst it's filling up. Go and have a frothy coffee. Got one more little field off of that one. Um, down here you've got the general stuff, PTO's there. Um, oil's a bit warm. Uh, fuel, engine temperature, revolutions. And then you've got your, your indicators. They're a bit clunky. That's one way, that's the other way. And you've got a self cancelling lever. Uh, lights on the end. Hooter. These here hazards. Um, that's your ladder up and down. It lifts this ladder up. That's high and low range. That's for. Um, they used to have uh, like a big balloon that went across the booms, and that was for the compressor that actually blew it up. But we didn't get the balloon. It was. It was a little bit of a fad, I think. Those things. It was meant to stop drifting. That's your PTO switch. That's your handbrake on off. On the floor there. You've got a couple of pedals, then one's down there, that one there, that uh, locks in your diff, that locks in both front and back axles to drive if you get a bit sticky. So, yeah, it's quite a straightforward thing to drive. These are your switches for taking your sections of your booms out. Um, this again is to put a pitch on your boom if so you want to pitch uh, one end up a little bit if uh, you know so you don't if it's a little bit uneven it won't catch in the ground so bad this is sort of flow on and off this is to level your boom sort of horizontally and that's boom up and down and uh, yeah that's about it now I'm going to just put this last bit out and then um, I'm going home, right, so I've done a bit of filming, and uh, yeah, I'll see if I'll get that uploaded tomorrow, we'll see, right, cheers then, bye bye, bye.